Hi guys, my name is Amanda. I am the youngest daughter from the Frosty Life channel and today I'm going to talk to you about photography. Hi guys, today I'm going to inform you about three key settings used in digital photography, which is aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. These are settings that you will want to use in manual mode, which is the M found on your camera. My name is Amanda, um, I'm Tom's daughter, and photography is something that I've been doing uh, professionally for almost a year now. Um, it's just really fun, so I'm just going to teach you a little bit of what I know so you can improve your own photography skills and understand um, the technical aspects to your camera a little bit better and how to use those settings and in what situations. First setting is aperture. Aperture has to deal with how much light you're letting into your camera lens. In the inside of your lens there's little fans that create a wide or narrow opening. The wider openings are going to have smaller numbers like 1.4 and the narrow openings are going to have higher numbers like 16. Now what these openings do is when it's bigger it's letting in more light. Think of it like the pupil of your eye. When you're in a really bright room, your eye pupil is going to shrink in because it's trying to let in less light. And then when you're in a dark room, your pupil is going to expand because it wants more light. That's how ap uh, aperture in the inside of your lens works. And what that does to your photos is when the opening is wider, it's going to get that blurred out effect. Um, so when you see a photo uh, and everything else in the background is blurred out, that's how you control that. Or if you want everything in your image to be crisp, like if you're taking a picture of a mountain range or a group photo, you're going to want an um, uh, aperture of maybe like 14 or 13, depending on your uh, lens. And that's what aperture has to deal with, it has to deal with your lens, not anything to do with the body of your camera. This is where different lenses come into play. So, um, aperture also has to deal with the size of your lens. So different lenses have different capabilities for um, shooting. So, you for like portrait photography, which a lot of photographers do because you're shooting people, especially for um, weddings or seniors or baby shoots, stuff like that. You're going to want a portrait lens which is like 50 millimeter. But you also have to be careful with your crop frame because um, your crop sensor is going to expand that, um, that, that uh, lens size. So for example, my crop frame is um, about I think like a 1.6 difference. Um, so you take the size of a uh, of a lens, so take a 50 millimeter for instance, and you times it by that 1.6, it's going to end up actually looking like a 70 to 85 millimeter lens instead of 50 millimeter. But if you have a, if you have a full frame camera, when you put that 50 millimeter lens on, it's going to look like a 50 millimeter. So what what your crop frame does this has to do with ISO. Your crop frame is found here. This is your crop sensor. Um, my crop sensor is 22.2 by 15, and a uh, full frame sensor is, I think, 36 by 24. So that's where that um, exemplification comes into play. ISO has to do a lot with your crop sensor as well. Um, you wouldn't think those two go hand in hand, but they do because if you have a crop sensor, um, ISO really depends on the sensitivity of that crop sensor. And if you have a smaller one, um, usually, I mean, my camera is still pretty good even though it isn't full frame. Um, and you have to start somewhere too. You can't just start off the big guns. So ISO is a setting that deals with how much um, sensitivity your sensor of your camera has to light. In olden days when film photography was used, you'd pick a film based on the light environment you were shooting in and then that would go into your camera. Now with digital uh, cameras, you can just switch it however you want digitally. 
ISO settings range from about 100 to 6400 on typical digital cameras. Uh, you're going to want to use the lower settings, like 100, in bright settings. So 100 is what you'd use outside. And a setting like 6400 is what you're going to use in a really dark room. Now you're going to want to be really careful when you use an ISO that high in a dark room because that's when you're going to start getting that graininess and that film effect on your photos. Um, and that's really hard to edit out when it's um, on your raw photo. So this is where you want to use a flash. Um, you can either use an internal flash, which is the flash that comes with your camera, or you can use an external flash, which is um, one that you hook onto your camera. I am um, pro external flashes because um, they shoot above your camera lens. So instead of uh, your flash um, that's connected on your camera, it's the light source is coming right above that uh, lens. And your lens is automatically going to focus on the first lighted source it sees. So example, if you're taking a picture with their, of somebody with their hands up or something, it's going to go to that their hands instead of focusing on their face or something like that. Um, so that's where you want an external flash because it just creates a nice broadened um, light source. The external flashes make the light source just seem more full and um, it's usually softer too. Plus you can move the flashes around whichever way you want. You can either bounce it off a wall or you can put it behind you or something like that instead of having it just directly onto the person. External flashes also help because they um, prevent those really rigid shadows and it helps with uh, facial features as well if you're doing portrait photography. The next setting I'm going to talk to you about is shutter speed. Shutter speed is my favorite because this is where you kind of get to stylize your photos. Shutter speed is how long um, the shutter of your camera is open and this also has to deal with light. Um, so the longer your shutter is open the more light um, your camera is going to let in. Um, when you see those pictures of like uh, like the cars going by or like somebody taking a sparkler and swirling it around like that, um, that's where uh, shutter speed comes into play. A lot of people think that those pictures are just edited to look like that, but you can just do it with um, your camera. Now you're going to want to use a tripod in those settings if you are shooting with a shutter speed that's slower than 1 60th of a second because then you're going to get that shake in your hands um, and you, you really want it to stay still. Um, one of my favorite techniques to do is I use an external flash and then I use a sh slow shutter speed about 1 8th of a second and as I'm shooting I rapid fire and then I shake my camera a little bit because the flash is going to catch that, that, uh, that subject first. It's going to freeze that into the image and then all the lights are going to be all swirly around you. And I can show you an example of that too. You have to really, really learn how to learn the craft of photography. You can't, you can't really just be a good photographer just to, because you have a good camera. You really have to learn um, these three settings, you really have to get them down. And to get them down, shoot in manual mode and just practice. Take a friend out outside in a really sunny day and just practice then. And then go outside at night and do some time-lapse photography and go into the woods and just, just practice in all sort, certain different kinds of aspects and situations and environments. It's gonna, that's really, it's gonna, that's gonna be what um, challenges you and shapes you as a photographer and um, what kind of style you like and you really have to um, learn how to use those three settings all at the same time because you could have a really really low aperture and get that blurred out effect but then when you look at your camera everything might be really really bright because aperture is letting all that light in through the lens so you have to compensate for that with your ISO and your um, shutter speed you just have to kind of you know learn and practice really about practice so yeah those are my tips to you I hope you can take them and learn something from them and have a good day some of my personal places to shoot are um, at shows so like
concerts and whatnot. That's my absolutely favorite. Um, it's where I have my most fun. I get to be free and stylize my photos that way. So if you guys like this video enough, I can do um, maybe a tutorial someday on how to do concert photography or even because that I, I think that would benefit you guys because I'm sure some of you have kids and they have a concert or something like that or are in a band or something or you go to a concert yourself and you want some good photos if you like this video enough I can make a video like that for you hey guys you might want to check out our Instagram yeah if you guys want to see some of my own photos um, and what I do with my life, you can follow me on my Instagram called nonconventional, and the link will be down below. Bye, guys. You can pop it up onto the screen right here or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Hi guys, my name is Amanda. Um, I am the youngest daughter from the Frosty Live channel, and today I'm not going to stutter. <laughs> One. Hey guys, um, today I'm going to not start with um. <laughs> <laughs>